Hey, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Kom ya salam. Koholo yawa, bahasim yahotsai, bahasim, rakaha hadash. Give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say for while to the Akim and Akwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. This is Yahshua Nawaf, just coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And we are almost out of here, man. Um, let's read in the book of Psalms, chapter 25. Very beautiful prayers, man. And um, the book of Psalms, I would say, try and get you a chapter out of there for a day. At least, you know, if it's nothing but a couple of verses, some of them are longer, some are, some of them are, um, you know, shorter. Some even have just like two or three verses. That's real powerful. But I wanted to go through um, Psalms chapter 25, doing a little something a little different today. Um, a little uh, uh, had a mishap this week with the vehicle, got into an accident. My signs were in the truck, you know, everything, you know. So it was pretty much totaled out. Uh, Got this other vehicle here, something to just back and forth, you know. Y'all about you, shot bless me with, but um, didn't get uh, all the information done at the Secretary of State to um actually ride out to camp this week. So uh, you know, got everything transferred over as far as my insurance, but you know, as far as plates, I didn't want to be out on the road. You know what I'm saying? So because you know, Esau, they're definitely out here right now for this holiday weekend. And they definitely clipping Jake, so I figure I'll just wait it out, you know, and just do something, you know, close by. So this is Psalm chapter 25. I'm going to start from the top. Unto thee, O Yahweh, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let not, let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. So this is something that, you know, that could be in prayer, man. You can pray that, that our enemies don't be over us. Our enemies don't triumph over us. You know what I'm saying? Because we are in a spiritual war and it's getting it's getting ugly. It's about to be, you know, what, you know, I guess in real war you would call casualties. You know, it's going to be men that are going to have to be carried off the field. Some men are going to lose limbs. Some men, but hey, the, the goal is to win the war and make it to the kingdom, man. You know what I'm saying? So, and the only way that we can do that is through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. We, we have no strength. We have no might. We have no power on our own. Um, we are, um, you know, Jacob, man. We are that worm, man, that the scripture speaks of. So now, there's some um, some precepts on that verse, too, which, uh, let me get here. We got um, Psalms 13 and 4. It's like you working with the big boy. I should have brought the smaller one. Uh, Psalms 13 and 4. And he reads, Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him. Let me start from the top. Uh, I mean, on uh, verse 3. Consider and hear me, O Yahweh, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. So we don't want our enemies rejoicing over us. You know what I'm saying? And, and they're not going to, as long as Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai got our back. You know? But the scripture says that, um, uh, he that is for me, who can, who can be against me? Let me see, so lock you. I don't want to butcher that. Let me go into the blue letter real quick. Word it has been a minute on that one. Lock. Sure, what I said exactly, so lock you, y'all. But basically, it, 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 um, roughly paraphrasing, if God is for us, if Yahweh is for us, then who can be against us? Pretty much overall, and 
That's very true. Who's going to be against us if Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is on our back, on our side, man? And, and Esau is about to find out real soon. He's he's peeping it now. He's seeing what's going on in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? He the, the elite know. And then you know some of these um, regular Edomites, they they're picking up on it too. They they can they can clearly see that this place is falling, and it's not going well for America, and it's not coming back. Okay, so they have a precept, um, Psalm chapter 22 right here. And uh, let me see, what was that? Psalm 22, verse 5. And it reads, They cried unto thee, O Salakia, verse 4, Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. That's beautiful, man. That's what our forefathers done. And you know, that's why the, um, you know, the records are there. For us to look back and, and to see what our forefathers done and to basically you know not make the same mistakes that they did and and also to see the power of our lord that he done for them when they prayed to you how about shimmy was shy you know the lord showed up man he showed up in a big way in a lot of captivities and he's going to do the same this was this captivity that we're in right now in the americas it's going to be one of the greatest escapes so to speak you know what i'm saying like for real for real it's going to be a super duper escape man the lord is going to look out for us real Real sweet, man. Let me go back, though. There was another one. Um, they got Psalms 31 and 1. Pretty much they're all in the book of Psalms. It's kind of somewhat of a repeat, uh, repeat of each one. Let's see that. Psalms 31 and 1. In thee, O Yahweh, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. See? And Yahweh by Shem Yahweh your trust should always be in him. Because the things that's about to come, all this carnal shit, man, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be, it's going to be all straight, flat out, all out spiritual. Even though we're going to be in carnal flesh and you're going to see carnal things around you and going on, but the winning part is going to be a spiritual win. It's going to be through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and those that have that spiritual foresight to see, you know what I'm saying? Um, matter of fact, um, that Isaiah 33 and 6, it talks about the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times and trusting in his wisdom and knowledge. Trusting in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and what he said, that's going to get us through while everybody else is, uh, you know, going damn nuts, man. Okay, so they had another precept, 34 and 8 on that same verse. It's lucky, I know I should have brought the smaller one. Wind blowing. Psalms 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that Yahweh is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. See? It goes on and on. So it's plenty of precepts to that. And that's verse 2 of um, chapter 25, Psalms 25, right? Okay. Turn away from the wind just a little bit. So let's go back. Let's get one in Isaiah 28 and 16. Pages. Isaiah 28 and 16 there therefore thus saith Yahweh power behold I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone sure a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste see so it's going to be it's going to all boil it down to boil down to those that believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man you know in the elect of Israel you know matter of fact though to be more direct about it let's get um Another one in Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 23. And it reads, And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. And this is what we're looking for in Esau, man. You know, for his kingdom to fall. And that they're going to take care of us like how we took care of them. They're going to be our slaves and servants. You know? They're, they're, their top men are going to be servants to us. They're kings or, or they're um, so-called elite. They're going to be, and, and they're, they're just going to, they're going to serve us like how we've served them. It's real simple, man. And that's going to be for the elite. And there's going to be a hierarchy too, man, in this, um, in this kingdom, man. You know, it's going to be brothers that's going to be into this truth. I mean, well, you know, in the kingdom, Salakia, that's going to have their, their heads down. 
they're going to be ashamed of the life that they lived on this side. But though they're going to be righteous with the law, statutes, and commandments on, on you know, written in their minds and hearts, but they're still going to have their heads down and they're going to have a, you know, a, a lower status in the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? But they're still going to be above Esau and these other nations. That's for sure. So that's a beautiful thing, too. So we don't know who they are and how that's going to roll right off. But, you know, there's going to be, you know, of course, a hierarchy because you're going to have, of course, you got Yahweh. Then you're going to have Yahweh Shai. You're going to have um, the 12. And then you're going to have 144,000. Then the one third. And then the two thirds are the ones that's going to be born back with their heads down, basically. Okay, so um, verse 3, it says, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Of, of Psalms 25 and 3, Salakia. So like Yea. Let none of them that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be, let them be ashamed which trans, which transgress without cause. So yeah, we pray. Hey, we, I pray. You should be praying that um those that transgress without cause. Hey, hey, let the curse be on them. Let the curse be on, especially Esau, man. But that could go for just some regular old two third Jake, man. That's out here doing you dirty, you know. Verse four says, "Show me thy ways, O Yahweh. Teach me thy paths." Right. And this is something, like I said, again, this is a beautiful prayer. Because you should want to know the ways of the Lord. You should want to know the path that the Lord wants you on. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that he will just, you know, keep you. And, and because it's safety. It's really his pavilion. It's really his, um, it's like his structure or, or his shelter, man. He's a buckler or he's a shield to the children of Israel, man. Those that trust in him, right? So now they got a, a couple of precepts on that. Psalm chapter 5, verse 1. And it reads, give ear to, me, to my words, O Yahweh. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, O King, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. See? So, you know, you want to ask Yahweh about Shem Yahweh to speedily, you know, the scripture talks about speedily hearing um, your prayer as well. You know? Some prayers, you know what I'm saying, you might ask for it, might, you know, might be something that's going to happen in the future. Sometimes you just need prayer on the spot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Lord, I need an answer right now, you know, so to speak, right? Okay, so now they have um, chapter 27 and verse 11 on that precept on that. Teach me thy way, O Yahweh, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. See, you want to be taught. As a matter of fact, the scriptures talks about um, who will learn wisdom, basically. You know, um, um, those that pretty much will listen to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh about Shem Yahweh Shai and keep them. So you want to be constantly moving in a path of, of, of Yahweh about Shem Yahweh Shai and these words, man. That's why I'm going like with the precepts. Scripture says, go precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line line after line before line. Here, little one, there, a little roughly paraphrasing, because um, it helps to know these precepts. And faith comes with, with um, you know, hearing. You know, sometimes it's, it's better to, you know, to, um, you know, to basically teach out or, you know, um, to read the scriptures out loud, so to speak. And then once you're going through the precepts, it's like, okay, you get it. You hit two or three precepts, you get it, and it's like it hits you different. You know, it, it builds you um, a little bit better, so to speak. Right? So let's go back to ch um, chapter 25. And we're at verse um, 5. It says, Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art Yahweh, for thou art the God of my salvation. On, on thee do I wait all the day. See? You're supposed to be waiting on Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai at all times. Verse 6. Remember, O Yahweh, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, kindnesses, for they have been ever of old. And this is what we need. We need mercy and the loving kindness of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Because in reality, on um, the Hebrew Israelites, we should be destroyed as a people. Why you think these people have been over us for the past 500, you know, damn near a millennial, man? Because we are, uh, uh, we just wicked as hell, man, as a people. It's just that, that simple. We're wicked as a people. We don't want to hear what the Lord has to say. Deuteronomy chapter 28, it tells us about how if we listen to him and obey him, how the curses, I mean, the, the blessings will be on us and we, we will be above all these nations. But because we didn't listen, the curses are upon us. And now all these nations are just in the neighborhoods, just tearing our asses up, man. Taking all our money, giving us foul services, looking down on us like we're not shit. So that's that's what comes with, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, the punishment of not listening to the Lord. So we need his mercy and his loving kindness, right? And uh, let me see, they got a few precepts on that too. 
Psalms 103 and 17. Psalms 103 and 17, it says, But the mercy of Yahweh is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. See? It's upon it's everlasting to everlasting to those that fear him and his and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his com commandments to do them. So this is for you know only the people that's really listening. You know, if you out here really trying your best, the Lord knows your heart, he knows that what you're trying to do. If he knows that you out here and you're really keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability, you're going to have favor, man. But 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 the ones that don't, it, it's not going to be a good look for them, man. It's, it's real simple. They have um, Psalms 106 and 1. And it reads, Praise ye, Yahweh, O give thanks unto Yahweh, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. See? So we're looking for that mercy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And, and again, you know, the ones that, you know, the two-thirds, and we're praying that we're part of the, the, the elect, man. But the two-thirds, the Lord is even going to have mercy on them. You know, but it's just going to be at a different time um, point, you know. Uh, we we want to make the, you know, the first coming, so to speak. You don't want any parts of that second death that's coming. And, and a lot of our people are going to get that second death, man. So they also have um, Psalms 107 and 1. Oh, give thanks unto Yahweh, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. See? So that's three precepts right there that, that should boost your faith. Then they have Isaiah 63 and 15 for that also. Say here to lock you. There we go right here. Isaiah 63 and 15. Look down from heaven and behold from the, from, from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength, the sounding of thy bowels and of thy mercies towards me? Are they restrained? See? Hey, hey, you know, that's a strong um, um statement right there. Because we've been at points where it's like, well, man, Lord, are you still even with me? Are you even with me, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh What have I done? You know, even Yahweh Shah felt that way. Yahweh Shah felt that way when, um, because he, uh, what did he say? My God, my God. Let me see if I can find that. When he was, you know, when he when he was on the cross, he done what he done for us. He he felt as if Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah had left him, man. But the, we know that's not not to be true. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was Mark chapter 15 and 34. And at the ninth hour, Yahweh Shai cried with a loud voice saying, Hello, 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 lama, sabach, sanai. Which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See? So even Yahweh Shai felt that way. So it's, you know, if you get the feeling that way, you know, just, 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 just continue to wait, man. That's why the scripture says to wait on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and to trust in him. You still have to wait. Just wait. You know what I'm saying? Don't do nothing rash. Don't do nothing, um, you know, silly. You know, don't don't move in the carnal flesh. You gotta wait in the spirit, man. Give Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Give Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah an opportunity to um to act, man. It's a lot. Get a little drink real quick. But yeah, you gotta um be on point with that. Don't don't because that's that's real serious. A lot of our people, they're gonna fall off. They're gonna fall off because they they're gonna feel as if the Lord done left them, and and then they're gonna be you know thinking um carnally, which that's something that you don't want to do. Okay, so we're back at Psalms um twenty five and seven. It says, "Remember not the sins of my youth." See, this is why I love this chapter right here. Um, it says, "Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness' sake." See, O Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, remember not the sins of my youth, because you know. That's why um, if you think of things, you know, you have to pray for your, the sins of your youth, even though we may not remember them. 
I don't remember what I done when I was 15, 16, 17. You know, some things will pop up and I, you know, and I remember it like, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, please forgive me. But, you know, you should be asking for that, you know. It says, um, remember not the sins of my youth and basically remember not my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Yahweh. See, according to thy mercy. See, that mercy is very important. You know, when somebody shows mercy towards you, that's like saying, all right, you know what? We good. I'm going to forgive what you've done. We good. Don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Check is clear. You see what I'm saying? And that's what we're looking for from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, so now they have a precept to that in Job 13, 26. And it's pretty much the way that you just go through the scriptures, too. When you go, you see those precepts, and, and the precepts is at the bottom, generally of a, of a verse to you newcomers. You'll see, like, other verses. That's just going to mean that it's going to give you a little bit more. Or it's probably going to say about the same thing, you know, in another um, book of the Bible or another chapter and verse. But it gives you more understanding when you read it like that. You know what I'm saying? Gives you more faith as well. So let's get this one. Job 13 and 26. Okay, and it reads, For thou writest bitter against me. For thou writest bitter things against me, and makest me to possess the, iniqui the iniquities of my youth. See that? So we know that the iniquities of our youth can be, that's why um, you have, um, that's why we need repentance so bad. Because you'll have, say like for instance, you got a person that's in their 50s, their 60s, 70s. You have to imagine, they've been, um, they had like, you know, 60, let's just say that, you know, the Lord, he, he looks at your iniquities from the age of 12, for instance. And now you're 62. So from 12 years old all the way to 62 years old, can you imagine the the the, the sins that are that that person has committed on a day? And, and, and then you're committing sins that you, you know, unknowingly committing even when you're in this truth. So you have to imagine the the, the iniquity. That's what iniquity is. That stack on, that build up, that build up, that build up. So you have people out here, man, that's in their 70s that have never repented in their life because why they're not calling on Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh Shai to begin with. And if they're calling on white Jesus, you know, they really in trouble. So that's why we, the, the, the sins of our youth, we do have to pray for that. You know, Lord, please, you know, rid us of the sins of our youth. You know, let me get that one back again. Job chapter 13 and verse 26. For thou writest bitter things against me and makest me to possess the iniquities of my youth. See, thou puttest my feet also in the stocks. And lookest narrowly unto all my paths. Thou settest the print upon the heels of my feet. And he, as a rotten thing, consumeth as a garment that is moth-eaten. <laughs> Amen. So the Lord is cold, man. Hey, you, you have to repent, man. And we need to repent daily. That's the thing. Okay, so we're back at Psalms 25. Let me see. It was another precept there, too. Or they had Job 20 and 11. Let's see what that one is. It says what, um, it was like precepts. You get understanding. It's through the precepts you get understanding, man. Precepts are very important to go into. Don't sleep on that. Just do what the scriptures say. It's very the scriptures is simple. Just simply do what they say. Don't get all um extravagant with it, man. A lot of a lot of J come into this truth and they want to, you know, get to being all, you know, acting like they're the smartest damn person on the planet, man. When it's, the scriptures is simple, they want to go all off into deep shit, man. Just just. Teach the scriptures, man, because basically the, the main thing of this thing is the kingdom is at hand. The Lord is about to come destroy this place, you know. The true name of the Father is Yahweh. The true name of his son is Yahweh Shai. You know, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Hebrew Israelites. Esau Edom is the so-called white man. He's going into captivity. Basics, man. Milk. Because cause that, because the, you know, the, the, the stumbling blocks of Christianity, white Jesus Christianity must be turned. And those are a lot of the main um, stumbling blocks. So from there, people will get to asking you questions. Okay, so what about this? Well, what about that? But you have to first off let the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans know that they are the true Hebrew Israelites. You know, the, the scriptures is, is simple. And that the kingdom is at hand. And that if they don't repent, the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, is going to destroy them. And it's simple as that. So let's get that Job 20 and 11. His bones are full of sin, of of. of his bones are full of sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. See? 
So the sins of your youth can uh, can follow you into your well it does it follows you straight into your older life, and that goes for even like eating shrimp, crab, and lobster, you know, eating um abominable foods, you know, eating catfish and you know all these abominable things. Because guess what? In your youth, your body may have handled it a little bit better, but as you get older, now your your arteries are all clogged up. You know, your you you know your um things are not operating right. You you know you have um all these different illnesses, hypertension and you know um cancers and you know. All types of shit going on with you. Why? Because you were sinning in your youth with the foods that you were eating. You see? So it makes a difference. Even with something as simple as that. You know, sleeping with someone else's um 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 wife, man. You may not get it right off. You know, and the scriptures talks about because uh uh, uh let me see, what is it? Uh, because uh, uh iniquity, let me see, because sin, because judgment doesn't come against a person um swiftly, I think it says. I think that's um Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ecclesiastes eight and eleven, because uh, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the son of men is fully set in them to do evil. That's the reason why a lot of our people they just continue to do evil on a day to day basis because they don't see anything happening to them. And then all of a sudden, that's why when you go into Proverbs chapter one, it talks about all of a sudden calamity comes upon them, and without remedy in a lot of cases because the Lord he. He wounds and he makes alive. He he heals. You know, it, it talks about he kills and he makes alive. He wounds and he heals. Um, and it says that there's no God with him. And neither can you um, can anyone get you out of his hand. So when the Lord is ready to um, deal with you, he's going to deal with you and he's going to be harsh. With you. And that's going to be through the spirits of um, vengeance that he created. Because he created spirits for vengeance. Right? Okay, so they have one more on that. In um, Jeremiah chapter 3. That is Jeremiah 3 and 25. Right. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 25, and it reads, We lie down in our saying, and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against Yahweh our God. We are in our fathers from our youth. Even until this day, and have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. See? We've been sinning against the Lord for a very, 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 very long time, man. Since, I mean, we've been in captivity <laughs> for man, Woo, pretty much our um, existence on the planet. All these other nations have been ruling over us, man, for ever since pretty much the reign of Solomon. King Solomon. That was a long time ago, man. So let's move on in uh, Psalms 25. Yeah, we're in a little warm spot, baby. It's hot out here today. Verse 8, Psalms 25 and 8. Good and upright is Yahweh. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way? So Yahweh is good and upright. And he'll teach you, he'll teach sinners in the way. You know? Because eventually you're gonna learn. <laughs> Whether it's you know, you, you know, you you learn without remedy, or you're gonna learn and you're gonna switch up and change. It's simple. You're gonna do what the Lord said to do. Or he's going to destroy you. <laughs> it is what it is. Verse 9, it says, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his, his way. And I've been praying for that as of late, you know, um, praying for um, a contrite and meek and humble spirit. And you know what? <laughs> hey, man, what they had that saying, uh, uh, be careful what you pray for. Man, when I tell you as soon as I started praying that, that was something that I just started adding on to my prayer a few weeks back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, let me just start praying for that as well to go along. But, you know, as I pray, as you learn precepts, you know, certain stuff you'll add on to your prayer. So, um, you know, I started praying for, um, you know, um, a contrite spirit, uh, meekness and um, humbleness. And, man, when I tell you, I've had one of the most humbling weeks or two weeks of my life <laughs> within these two weeks, man. You know, and because and, and, when I got into the accident, I was at a light, you know what I'm saying, eat a mite being impatient turned out in front of me but you know i did pray that morning for um you know um, for um you know for safety so instead of hitting the guy head on you know i was able to hit the brakes i swerved out a little something some whacked him on the side of um you know but it, it just totaled out the the side of the truck you know what i'm saying to the point where it was just like ah you know but anyway got the you know police came done all the things that they done whatever whatever and it was crazy because when I was driving to work, it was like I never felt that good. 
it, you, well, I can't say I never felt that good, but it was just like it dawned on me. I'm like, I'm driving, and then all of a sudden it hit me like, well, dang, that pain that I was having. It's a lot. It's a lot here, y'all. Uh, my uh, little Bluetooth went off, so I want to make sure we still got some sound here. So it's a lot here. Uh, I hate that. Give me one sec here. I had this Bluetooth on my strapped on to me so it could sound the sound could be better. Okay, so we're still going. Hopefully, everything is all right. Um, and hopefully, you can hear me from over here. I have to talk a little louder. Yeah, you know, um, I was, you know, once I got the police report and all that stuff like that, the police incident um, number and stuff, I was like, I was already right at the job. That's, that's the crazy part, because I was headed to the plantation. So, um, you know, kicking it with the boss, he's like, oh, well, you want to take off the rest of the day? You want, you got business to handle? I'm like, shit, well, I'm all right, man. You know, I'm already here, <laughs> basically. But, you know, I'm like two or three blocks up from um, the, the plantation. So as I'm walking, you know, I'm just thinking, you how about you, me, I was shy, you know, but I'm walking and there's this car pass and I see the license plate. I'm like, man, I know that license plate ain't just say what I thought it said. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up kind of walking past it and I'm waiting on it to pass again because it's at a light. And when the car passed again, it had Yahweh on the plate, man, with, with the number seven, which which goes off into completion. <laughs> but you know they had the um YHWH you know how you know they had the uh you know the the just the YHWH but I knew that it mean you know it meant Yahweh to us you know they may say Yahweh you know what I'm saying but I knew to me it meant Yahweh and it had the number seven and it was just like a cooling you know um experience it just came over me and I just walked on into the plantation man and worked that day out you know everything kind of worked out and stuff anyway you know what I'm saying um I mean, it did. I can't say it kind of worked out. It did, but I just found that to be very spiritual. But that particular morning, it was like the stuff that I would normally feel, like, you know, like pains, aches, ailments, and shit like that. I'm driving, and I'm like, God damn, I feel good. Like, what happened? You know, I'm thinking about stuff. None of that stuff that I would normally be going through was going on. And then all of a sudden, here come Esau. <laughs> Esau, impatient, turning through a light. While I'm on the green, he, he tries to cut a left. And thought, he, thought that he could make it, I guess. And then, you know what I'm saying? That's how the accident happened. So, here's what it is. Just lock you. A little bit hot out here today. Anyway, let's go ahead. We got um verse 10. Psalms 25 and 10. All the paths of Yahweh are mercy and truth. Unto such as keep his co his covenant and his testimony. See that? It says, All paths of Yahweh are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. So if you're not keeping his co covenants and his testimonies, then hey, you are outside of his mercy. And something can really, really, you know, seriously happen to you. And it doesn't take the Lord doing something to you to judge you, man, because he can judge you through um a family member, somebody that you may actually love, you know, somebody that you actually may actually probably be putting above him to begin with right okay so we uh verse 11 it says for thy name's sake oh yahweh pardon mine iniquity for it is great but you got jake running around out here man think they ain't never done nothing wrong in their life they don't feel guilty about it, doing anything that they do they proud as hell man jake could tell you quick well what have i done i ain't done nothing what do you mean sin what would i have to you know i'm um, on um, repent for i've done nothing i'm perfect but no one is perfect like that except Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. That's Jake, though. Let me get that again. It says, for thy name's sake, Yahweh, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. You know? Because our iniquity is great. But the only way that we can, you know, get pardoned is through the mercy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, and there's some precepts on that as well. Let me turn this way again. It's lock you, man. I, I hope that um, the volume is good. Okay, they got Psalms 31 and 31 and 3. 
It says, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. So for the sake of the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is the reason why Israel is still on the map, man. <laughs> really, in reality, because we should be, um, we should have been done away with for breaking the contract that we made with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, so they have um, Psalm 79 and 9. Help us, O Yahweh, of our salvation for the glory of thy name. See? And deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. So for the for the name's sake, for Yahweh. See, and you got these Israelites talking about how the, the Lord's name don't matter. The Lord's name, does, his name does matter. How are you going to ask for um, forgiveness of sin and for your iniquities of your youth to be forgiven if you don't know who you're actually saying that to? See? And the Lord not dealing with no idols. You can, you know, you you know, you got um a lot of our people running around out here too, talking about how it doesn't. He knows my heart. He knows who I'm talking to. No, no, you better be calling on the right names, man. Because for the names, for the Lord's name's sake, is you know we're asking for this mercy, you know, and this grace, you know, and this long suffering from Him, man. That name matters. Don't let nobody fool you into telling you and telling you that um the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai makes no difference. You can just call what call him what you want to call him. It makes a huge difference. Okay, and they have um, Psalms 109 and 21 of that. Psalms 109 and 21, and it reads, Let it be unto him as, as the garment which covereth him, and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Wow, let me see, what is that? 109 and 21. Oh, no, no, I read the wrong one. So, But do thou for me, O Yahweh the Lord, for thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. See? For the name's sake of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Then they have um, Psalms 143 and 11. They pretty much about see kind of like the same things, of course, again, but you know, a little, little, you can get a little something else in them sometimes. A little bit more added to it. Next time we have to rock with that smaller boy. That's Psalms 143 and 11. Quicken me, O Yahweh, for thy name's sake. See? For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. See? For thy name's sake. You running around out here, Jake out here calling on um, white Jesus, man. You're not getting nothing answered, man, calling on white Jesus. You can forget about it. Back at Psalms 25 and 12. It says, what man is he that feareth the Lord, Yahweh? Him shall he teach in the way that shall, he shall choose. See? What man is he that feareth the, the Lord, Yahweh? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. See? And our people have absolutely no fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's why they're fools. They don't have no fear in Yahweh. That's the reason why they make such foolish moves on a day-to-day -day basis throughout the day. You be wondering, like, well, dang, what was I thinking? How did that happen? What it... No, no, because they don't have no fear in, your, in the Lord. They, the Lord is just letting them just walk in blindness. That's that's a, that's a scary feeling, man. They, they're just walking just aimlessly. Stumbling blocks everywhere. Pits everywhere. Fires all around them. You know, motherfucking snipers on the building. They just out here just moving on along, just like, and then all of a sudden, calamity strikes, right? Um... I think that was, uh, let me see, uh, verse 13. Psalms 25 and 13. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. See? Those that fear the Lord, it says, his soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. And this is really going to happen. See? The seed of the righteous, the seed of the elect are going to inherit the earth. The two-thirds are going to be born back into the earth. You know what I'm saying? But the ones that fear the Lord, the elect of Israel, those are the ones that's going to receive that first. And then again, like I said, you know, um, um, you're going to have two-thirds of Israel. They're just going to be in the kingdom, man, of shame, you know, so to speak, man, with their heads down. Because Why? Because, you know, they, they, they came up against this truth. A lot of them then, you know, um, got paid off. A lot of them just, you know, just wanted to just live this life. They just carnal. They love this, this side. They're going to get their reward from this side. Right? And it's not going to be pretty, man.
Okay, uh, they got a precept to that. Psalms 37 and 11. And it reads, But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. See? And then they have um, verse 22 in there, the same chapter, and verse 29. So verses 22 and 29 out of the same chapter. 22. For, let me see. Yep. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. <laughs> you know, it's simple. Verse 29, it says, The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. And that's what we want to make, man. We want to be a part of the first fruits of that, man. Right? Okay, they got Proverbs 19 and 23. Let's see what that says. Proverbs 19 and 23. The fear of Yahweh tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Amen. Let me get that one back again. Let me see if that's... Yeah, Proverbs 19 and 23. The fear of Yahweh tendeth to life. See? If you fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh you're going to have life, man. If you don't, it's death that comes with that. There's no, no way around it. And he that hath it, and he that hath it, shall abide satisfied he shall not be visited with evil and that's what we're looking for man we know that things are going to happen but the ultimate of what's about to come to this place and to a lot of our people you don't want no part to that man okay verse um 14 we're back at psalms 25 again and that's why i said you know i'm praying that this edify because when you read through these psalms man you get a lot of good information it, it, it's precepts it teaches you how to live it teaches you to fear the lord it teaches you what to pray for the secret, verse 14, the secret of the Lord, Yahweh, is with them that fear him, and he will show them his, co his covenant. See? The secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him. You got a good, healthy dose of fear when you, you know, you keep the commandments. You're going to do what the Lord says to do. You're going to do what these scriptures say to do. So guess what comes with that? There's a reward that comes with that. Let me get that back. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. What's the secret? The secrets is of this, 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 the, the dark sayings of this knowledge and truth. Now, you got people out here, you know what I'm saying? They really, you know, have a zeal and think that they're doing what is right. But it's not by the name and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's not by the spirit. So you got Christians, they'll, you know, they, they do some of the stuff that the scriptures say. They'll front as if they're righteous, but they don't have that real true fear of the Lord. Because if they did, if you told them that the Lord's name is Yahweh, and his, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, and that the Israelites are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. See, they come up against the word. They'll come up against that. Like, no, the Lord loves everybody. So that would mean that they don't have no fear of the Lord. Why? Because they're adding to and taking away from the scriptures, basically. They don't have no fear of the Lord. So them secrets, they, it, do, it doesn't dwell with them. It says, the secret of Yahweh is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Verse 15, mine eyes are ever towards Yahweh. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. <laughs> so you want to constantly be meditating on Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Because even though you may get chastised for something that you may have done, that chastisement comes with love. As opposed to him just allowing you to just, you know, walk in darkness and be destroyed. So they have a precept to that in Psalms 141. Let me get that real quick. Pretty much about at the end of the chapter. I think it's a few more verses. Psalms 141 and verse 8. And he reads, But mine eyes are unto thee, O Yahweh, the Lord, and thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. That's a beautiful prayer. That's why I'm saying these precepts are so cold. As I'm reading it, I'm praying it. As I'm reading through these, I be praying these, man. I be highlighting them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Adding them to, you know, um, personal prayer throughout the day. Right? Verse 16, um, Psalms 25 and 16, we're back there. It says, Turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. See? That's something that you should be praying for if you're feeling desolate and you're feeling afflicted. You, you should be asking the Lord to turn unto me and have mercy upon me. See? 
and they have a preset to that Psalm 68 Uh, no, Psalm 69 and 16. Psalm 69 and 16, and it reads, Hear me, O Yahweh, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. See? Hear me, O Yahweh, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. See? That's something to pray for, man. And then they have one in um, Psalms 86 and 16. But like I said, a lot of the Psalms, they'll back up, back you up in Psalms. Sometimes it'll take you to other books, though. But a lot of the Psalms, they kind of repeat themselves a little bit. But they'll give you a little bit more onto it, you know, again. What was that? Uh, Psalms 86 and 16. It's a lot Psalms 86... In verse 16, it reads, O turn unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and save the son of thy handmaid. As a matter of fact, I got that in the Hebrew prayer. And this other one, too, that I read at first. Um, turn unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and, and afflicted. I got that um, the brother um, from um, D.C., the GMS D.C. camp. He puts up, um, I think it's, I can't think of his channel right off his something 144 army but he's really great in the, in the hebrew um tongue the, the paleo hebrew and um i got a whole every time he does a lesson on it i write it out in my notebook and then i pray that whole thing at night i got like four pages in a notebook of nothing but hebrew prayers i say it in the hebrew and i also say it in the english and this is one of them i just thought about it that is one of them okay so now we are at psalms chapter 25 and verse 17. There's only a few more verses with it, so we'll be finished up in a little sec here. The troubles, Psalms 25 and 17. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. See? Why would you not pray to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai for something like that if you're going through something? The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. That's something you should be praying for. That's a beautiful thing to pray. Look upon my afflictions and my pain. And forgive all my sins. You can't tell me, man. You should be praying for that. <laughs> and they have a precept to that in um, 2 Samuel chapter 16 and 12. 2 Samuel 16 and 12. Let's see here. Yep. 2 Samuel 16 and 12, it may be that the Lord will look on my affliction. And this was going on, you know, when David was being cursed out by that, um, you know, by that other brother. It says, in the day, and matter of fact, let me start at verse 11. Let me start at verse 10. And the king said, what have I to do with you, ye sons? Oh, no, no. Okay, I see. That was a different account. And the king said, what have I to do to, with you, ye sons of Zariah? So let him curse. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the guy. He was cursing David out. Said David was a bloody man. Caught him, you know, and they was ready to cut his head off. David's men. It says, because the Lord hath said unto him, curse David. Who shall then say, wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse for the Lord Yahweh hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on my infliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. See? So that was the attitude that King David had. You know, King David wrote a bunch of these, these beautiful um songs for us, man. King David was a man of war. He went through a lot of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, you have to imagine he had King Saul after him. He had all these different nations after him. He had enemies on all sides. His son tried to take over the throne. You know, but that was all because of, you know, the things that he had done, you know, with, you know, with Beersheba, you know, dealing with another man's wife. But guess what? The Lord had tender mercy upon him. So that, so this goes off into mercies, man. Right. Verse 19. Um, Psalms 25 and 19. Consider mine enemies, for they are many. And they hate me with cruel hatred. And that was, you know, this is what King David was going through. 
Because our enemies hate us with a cruel hatred. Don't think Esau, man. Esau hate the shit out of you with a very cruel, cruel hatred, man. This man, even the nice shit that he be doing be cruel. <laughs> Scriptures talks about that too. Verse 20. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O Yahweh, out of all his troubles. And that's, that was the hit on it, man. That was it. He says, oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Always goes back to that trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Can't get around it, man. Because we need the, that trust. We need to trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because he's the only one that can get us out of what we're in. He created all things. It would make sense to go back to the owner's manual. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you're you not going to have a handbook for a Honda and you got a Bentley. <laughs> you know, you're not going to treat a Honda the same way that you would treat a Bentley. You're going to want to go to the, the manual. The manual may not even be in the glove box for a Bentley, man. The manual might just be straight on the computer. Like in some of these newer vehicles. They don't they don't come with like a handbook like that. Some of them do. But your handbook is generally right on the screen of the um, the car now. It'll tell you what kind of oil to use. You know what I'm saying? So with these scriptures, you can use that same concept in the same way. Like the Lord gave us the manual as to these, these bodies that we have. The, the way to move. The, 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 the type of foods to put into it. You know, the um, the, the spiritual uh, uh, gasoline that you need, so to speak. This is it right here, the scriptures, man. Okay, but they did have a um, a precept to um, the last verse, chapter um, Psalms 25 and 22. Redeem Israel, O Yahweh, out of all his troubles. And, and we pray that for all of um, Israel, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know that it's going to be for the elect, though. But eventually, all of Israel are going to be out of the, the hands of our enemies. But they have um, a precept, Psalms 130 and 8. Let's see what it says. And we can end out there. Psalms 130 and 8. And it says, And he shall redeem. Let me start from verse 7. Let Israel hope in Yahweh. For with Yahweh there is mercy. And with him is plenteous redemption. Ooh, can't get around it. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. That's beautiful, man. This is what we're looking forward to. So, you know. That's the lesson for the day so far. You know what I'm saying? Um, maybe possibly at the um, the same, you know, the um, the the the, uh, the main location. They've been doing construction in that spot though, um, and I don't think they're gonna be through soon. They, they could be doing that all summer long. So we'll see how that's gonna work out. Uh, but you know, I just wanted to just do something by the spirit and power of the whole about you outside. A little bit different, a little bit of a different setup. But I mean, hey, the word still goes out. You know what I'm saying? You know, cause. We can prophesy to the wind, you know what I'm saying? And we'll get out and do other things as well. But, you know, the you know the internet, YouTube, it does the, the legwork for us, man. The, the bulk of the work is going through that that, that, that that internet, man. So, you know, with all with that, I'm just going to end out by saying, Call Hello Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakaha Kadash. And double honors again to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And with that, Shalom.